In today's video, we're going to continue our 2019 NHL Top Prospect Series, and we're taking a look at the top five prospects for the Philadelphia Flyers. We'll get into all of that coming up next. Welcome back here to Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, today we're covering off our top five prospects for the Philadelphia Flyers. We have plenty of other teams that have already been covered in this series. And if you're new to the series, I'll put a link up here in the YouTube cards. You can go back and watch the other teams that are already covered. And the team you're looking for is not in there as of yet. Stay tuned. They will all be coming soon. All 31 teams will have their own dedicated video. Now, the Philadelphia Flyers, in my opinion, have a terrific prospect pool. And even though not too long ago they let go of GM Ron Hextall, in my opinion, Hextall and his staff did a terrific job at drafting during his time as general manager of the Flyers. Uh, they have a lot of good young players in the prospect pool here. So let's take a look at who are the top five, in my opinion, for this Flyers team. Now, first up, we've got Philippe Myers, who's a six foot five right shot defenseman who actually went undrafted and was signed as a free agent by the Philadelphia Flyers. Considering how coveted right shot defensemen are, especially ones with size like Myers, it's really hard to imagine that he went undrafted. Now, he was originally born in Moncton, New Brunswick. Played his junior hockey in the QMJHL's Ruin Narenda Huskies program. Had a pretty solid showing, which led to the contract here with the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, the last couple of years, though, he has battled some injuries. This past season, though, was certainly more solid, and he finally got to make a lot more progress, and he did get into his first 21 NHL games. When he was first on, he was kind of expected to become a big shutdown defenseman. He's got a great shot. He's sound defensively and positionally. A really good skater for a guy his size as well. He gets it running us exceptionally well. Oftentimes you see big players like him sometimes don't have the best foot speed and sometimes do struggle with their skating. But in my opinion, he gets around the ice exceptionally well. Based on his progress last year, I would think the odds of him making the Flyers roster are pretty solid at our training camp. However, we did see them make several moves uh, to make adjustments to their blue line for the coming year. So it might prove to be a little bit more difficult for him to make the roster than uh, many of us had originally thought. But listening to comments from Chuck Fletcher even earlier this offseason, it did sound like they were pretty pleased with his development and thought he had an excellent shot at making the team out of training camp, if for any reason he doesn't, I do expect him to be their primary call-up option and likely will get into a fair bit of action with the Flyers for the coming season. But to have a six foot five right shot defensive line came in your prospect pool who has the potential to be a shutdown type of guy is certainly exciting. Flyers blue line already boasts some pretty young, exciting defenders like Provorov and Gosses Bear, as well as Sandheim now. Uh, so adding a guy like Myers into the mix is certainly rather exciting. It should make for a pretty solid decor for the Flyers for many years to come. Next up, we have 2016 first round selection, German Rupstoss, who's now 21 years old. Looks like he was drafted number 22 overall back in 2016. Played his junior hockey for the Acadie Bathers T10. Had a chance to play for the Memorial Cup uh, two seasons ago, which was a great experience for him. He ended up putting up 32 points in 38 games during that season of junior hockey and put up a couple more points during the Memorial Cup tournament as well. Now, last year, unfortunately, was not great for him. Uh, early into his stint in the American Hockey League, he was injured, uh, had a shoulder injury, and ended up missing the rest of the year after only playing 14 games. Now, during those 14 games, he did put up 10 points and got off to a pretty decent start here uh, to his pro career. Hopefully after recovering from surgery and heading into training camp for the upcoming season, we can see him kind of pick off where he left off and kind of resume his pro career. More than likely, he will start again in the American Hockey League, but he is a really strong defensive strong to a player. In my opinion, he kind of projects to be probably your prototypical third line type of forward. He can play center, but he could end up being a winger at the NHL as well. Hard to say exactly right now, but he's got good hockey sense. He works hard, strong defensive two-way player with some decent offensive upside. So like I said, I think he's your prototypical middle six type of center. Probably more like a third line guy, but he is going to have trouble making the Flyers roster. They are pretty deep with the additions that they've made over the last couple of years, plus the other guys ahead of him here on the depth chart. So it's certainly going to be interesting to see how he tries to find uh, his way onto this roster, onto this team to create some NHL opportunity. But he is a pretty solid, interesting prospect for the Flyers. Next up, we have 2017 second round selection from the OHL, Isaac Radcliffe, who's now 20 years old. Had a couple of really solid years playing for the Guelph Storm in the Ontario Hockey League. He's got really good size, six foot five, over 200 pounds. He put up 82 points in 65 games played last year in Guelph. Got a chance to play in the Memorial Cup, again, which is a terrific experience. Any player who's had the opportunity to play in that tournament uh, can certainly benefit from that extra experience. So not only did his team have a terrific regular season and playoff, 
won the OHL championship, but also uh, competed for the national championship as well, which was a great season overall for himself and his team. But he certainly has the potential to become a big power forward. He's a great skater, moves around the ice well for his size. He's really smart, has great hockey sense. And he's got a pretty solid two-way game as well. More than likely, Radcliffe starts in the American Hockey League. Uh, because of where everything's at with the Flyers roster, I just don't see him getting a shot right at a training camp. Uh, but obviously, this will be his first year in pro hockey, so we'll see how the adjustment are made um, a lot of guys coming in a junior sometimes start a little slower but sometimes they pick up right where they left off and the offensive game translates immediately so it'd be interesting to see how Radcliffe does but I think he's likely going to start in the AHL and see if he can earn himself an opportunity down the road but he's another power forward type of winger with big size and offensive upside here to add to this prospect pool Next up, we have 2018 first round selection taken number 14 overall out of the United States National Team Development Program, Joel Faraby, who's now 19 years old. Uh, of course, after being drafted from the United States program, uh, went on to play for Boston University last year, first year of college hockey. Things went relatively well. He put up 36 points in 37 games, but then elected to leave school and sign his pro NHL contract with the Philadelphia Flyers. So, of course, now he'll either be in the NHL or the American Hockey League for the coming year. But Joel Faraby was a terrific draft choice back in 2018. He's a natural goal scorer. He's going to be a terrific winger for the Flyers in the not-too-distant future. I really think Faraby has a shot to make this roster out of training camp. Uh, between him and the next guy we're going to talk about, I think, are going to be the youth that's injected into this roster in the very near future, either out of training camp or throughout the season, as uh, depending on where the team's needs are with injuries and everything. But the thing about Faraby is he's not just a goal scorer. He's not like a one trick pony here he's also really good on the pk he's not afraid to block shots he's a high energy hard worker kind of player he can play with a lot of pace and a lot of tempo and certainly get his teammates going that way uh, he could certainly use a little bit more muscle though which might be what he needs to be more successful at the nhl decent height at six feet tall but he was only 165 pounds uh, so he certainly could add a little bit of muscle to that frame to make him a little bit more rugged for the nhl pro game which is certainly you know more physical than what he's used to so i guess we'll see how that goes but certainly size is not as big a factor as it used to be in this league obviously when you get speed and skill and you're a natural goal scorer things can typically work out quite nicely for you and that's kind of where Faraby uh, slots right now but if you can add a little bit extra size there that might go a long way just to solidify things for him but Faraby is definitely a great prospect for the flyers to keep your eye on I think there's a pretty good chance he gets onto this team in a training camp at the very least for like a nine-game trial, but would not be surprised uh, to see him stick with the club perhaps for the entire season. Now, in my opinion, the top prospect for the Flyers is 2017 first-round selection Morgan Frost, who's been playing in the Ontario Hockey League uh, for the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. Terrific center iceman, another guy who I think has an excellent shot in making the Flyers roster at a training camp. Like I said, I think Frost and Farabee are going to be the two youth players that are the most likely to be injected into this Flyers roster to mix in with the other veterans that they already have on this roster right now. I mean, Morgan Frost has put up back-to-back 100-point -back campaigns in the OHL. This past year, he put up 109 points, but he only competed in 58 games played. A lot of that was due to the fact that he was gone playing for Team Canada at the World Junior, so he was away from his team uh, for an extended period of time because of that and he had a terrific tournament as well putting up eight points in five games really showed that he's one of the top prospects uh, to get into the NHL for the coming year now Morgan Frost has a really high hockey IQ he's incredibly skilled and in my opinion he's one of those types of players that just seems to make everybody around him better he's a dual threat on the ice as well he's got great vision so it makes him a great passer but he can also finish and has a pretty decent shot as well uh, so I do think Morgan Frost Alexa along with Joel Faraby are some two terrific prospects that should get a big time opportunity with the Flyers this year and will be interested to see what they can do but they certainly come out of junior hockey and in Faraby's case at a BU with a lot of potential a lot of promise and certainly a bright future here for these youngsters with the Flyers organization. Those are your top five prospects for the Flyers. Now, they also have some other guys, too, in my opinion, that are pretty solid. They get a couple other goaltenders uh, that are likely going to be. They have a couple other goaltenders besides Carter Hart who are young and pretty solid looking right now including Felix Sandstrom as well as Samuel Urson. Now Urson had a really solid tournament uh, for Sweden last year at the World Juniors. He's a really interesting prospect. I think he's got more upside than Sandstrom does longer term. Uh, very well could prove to be uh, a pretty solid NHL goaltender in a couple years time. They have a couple more interesting defensemen on the way as well including Adam Gidding from Sweden and Jäger Zamula of Russia. 
a few other interesting forward prospects, including Jay O'Brien and Matthew Strom. Now, Matthew Strom is the, the younger brother of the other Strom brothers in the NHL, Ryan and Dylan. And he's probably, in my opinion, has the potential to maybe even be the best one. I know the way things were looking for Dylan Strom early on, uh, things were not great while he was in Arizona, but he's really found his game since going to Chicago. But Matthew Strom is a big, strong scoring forward. He's over six foot four, has a touch for the Nets and gets some great hands on him. So I am very interested to see what he can do uh, given some opportunity as well. I think he's a guy to kind of keep your eye on. I mean, I know the Strom brothers have not made the greatest name for themselves so far in the NHL, but I do think he might just have the most upside amongst the three. But I guess the only time will tell how they all develop. If Dylan Strom continues uh, to produce for Chicago uh, with linemate Alex Dabrinkit like he did last year after being traded there, then maybe living up to those expectations might be a little bit more difficult. But either way, Matthew Strom is another interesting prospect for the Flyers. Now, even after all those great prospects for the Flyers, they still have a couple more interesting top guys as well from the 2019 NHL draft, including defenseman Cam York and forward Bobby Brink. Now, in the case of York, you get a prototypical new age defenseman who's a great skater, moves the puck very quickly and efficiently. He's originally from Southern California, who was one time coached by former NHLer and Hall of Famer Scott Niedermeyer. So, hopefully, uh, if his influence worked off on York, uh, he turns out to be anywhere near that caliber of defenseman, then he'll be pretty awesome. Now, he's unfazed by pressure. He's a great playmaker, good in the power play. So, he certainly has a lot of potential as well. He will be playing U.S. college hockey uh, for probably a couple years before he makes the jump to the NHL. So the only reason I don't have him included in your top five is just I think he's going to be a little bit further away from making the jump here to the NHL. Now in the case of Bobby Brink, you get another American-born forward who's a little bit smaller, 5'8", around 165 pounds. But he's got great vision, great anticipation. He scored really well during his days in the USHL. Very high hockey IQ. But his skating does need some work as well. He's another American-born player going through the U.S. college hockey system who has committed to playing for the University of Denver. So, again, I do think he has some, a lot of potential upside, but I do see him being a couple of years in college hockey and probably being at least two or three years away from the NHL. But overall, I think they have one of the deeper, more offensive-minded prospect pools amongst all the NHL teams. At the end of the series, I do intend to rank all 31 teams' prospect pools against each other and come up with a list of 1 through 31. And it will not be surprised at all if the Philadelphia Flyers end up pretty high in that list because they do have a lot of top-notch guys that are knocking on the NHL's door and likely could be big-time impact players in the not-too-distant future. So those are your top prospects for the Philadelphia Flyers. Of course, as always, we'll know your thoughts and opinions on these guys down in the comments section. Which prospects do you think are the most likely to have an impact on this team short-term as well as longer-term into the future? If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time. <laughs>